hit the nail on the head, her cackle, which has been a subject of great ridicule for the mm. last couple of years, they've, they've turned that into... No, no, it's, it's not an embarrassing cackle. It's yep. joy. And, and the previous day when her husband got up to speak and told their get-together story again, nothing about policy, nothing about running the government, why she should be the next president of the United States of America. No, it was just all about this lovely, heartwarming, feely story about how they got together. And he made a point of saying how much he loved her laugh and how it, that right. was one of the first things that appealed to him and made him really sweet on her. I would love to see you find that many people to agree. But, of course, this entire conference is just the vibe. So everyone's just like togetherness and niceness and awesomeness. Except when I'm Joe Biden I'm sitting at home spoke. being like, I need it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Joe Biden was like, it's, it's like all joy and then he gets the angry up, old man. angry yeah. and yelling and sneering. Yeah. And yet at the same time trying to convince everyone, they said I'm angry at everyone yeah, exactly. for making me step down, but I'm not angry. <laughs> We're all like, yeah, OK. But it is amazing and you're absolutely right. They are going with the vibe because there is no kind of code intellectual or policy argument yeah, for Kamala zero. Harris. I mean, the, the policy argument is where people are at now. And the, pro and the, the, the problem these lunkheads make, these people who just get stars in their eyes any time they see a Democrat and, and opens one of them, is that no normal person feels joy for politicians. No normal person feels euphoria because someone is a, pres a presidential candidate or someone is their local MP. And they certainly don't feel it in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Mm. So the idea, like the optics of... Um, of Oprah, a multi, multi millionaire, in fact, I think a billionaire possibly, um, getting up and saying, You should feel happy for Kamala. You should feel joy and happiness and love for Kamala Harris because you just should, is exactly what Hillary Clinton did when it was with, I'm with her, you know. Mm -hmm. You should vote for Hillary yeah. Clinton so that she can smash the glass ceiling and fulfill her lifelong dream to become the first female president of the United States. And people are like, I'm busting my nut here. I'm busting yeah. my guts. Yeah. You know, they've just shut my car family, you know, they've just shut my car factory and moved it to Mexico. You know, Trump's out there at the rallies. You know, Hillary, where was she? She was hanging out with Beyonce. Now you've got Kamala hanging out with Oprah. This is a mm. terrible look. Like whoever is saying this is a good idea yeah. are making the exact same mistake. I still don't know if it's going to hurt that much, but it is just nuts. But one person I did love at the uh, DNC was uh, this next guy is Bexar County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Salazar. Just for the name alone, it's fantastic. But just, you think he sounds good, wait till you see him. <laughs> when Donald Trump comes down to Texas, stands next to officers in uniforms just like mine, he's not there to help us. Don't think that, not for a second. He is a self-serving man. I mean, look, just like, just like when he killed the border bill, he just made our jobs harder. Now, Kamala, on the other hand, has been fighting border crime for years. She's gone down to Mexico and worked to stop the traffickers. And when the traffickers didn't stop, she put them in jail. Now, in, in Texas, that is what they call your dress hat. <laughs> It's the one you don't wear it for rope and steers. You wear that. That's your that's your night hat. That's your evening wear hat. No. You wear it out. It's fancy. It's pristine. I think in Texas they call that big hat no cattle, don't they? No, it's uh, all hat no horse. All hat no horse. <laughs> But, but, no but the what content of what he was saying, untrue. what a blatant lie. It was the Texan governor who actually it got down to the mattresses with the feds because he said, if you won't allow us to protect our border and stop these illegals from coming over, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And it was these big fisticuffs between the Texan governor and the federal government who kept saying, no, no, we're in charge here. You don't get to take control of your own border. And the Texan government, uh, governor rather, who was saying, well, you're not taking any control of it, so it is left up to us. And here's this guy saying, oh, Kamala's been doing an amazing <laughs> job. Trump never did anything. They are outright lies. There's a few conservative commentators who are literally doing fact checks. So every day of the DNC, they'll, they'll watch the whole thing and then create these fact checks, mm. like... 
It, it takes hours for them to get through it all, but it is just <laughs> lie after lie well, after Strangely lie. enough, it's almost, it's almost not even that because it's so vague that it's actually difficult to pin down things. So this guy's obviously been sent out to disable the one issue they know is most harmful to yeah. them, which is illegal immigration on the southern border, right? So, so you know, this, this, is, this is as close as they get to actually talking about policy and talking about the criticisms of their key immigration policy. And they have this guy out here, again, wearing the big hat, trying to look authentic. It doesn't look like a bloke who's actually standing sentry on the wall, does it? There's not much, there's not much t East Texas red clay on him. Uh, but he's there anyway. And, and but what does he say? He says, you know, Kamala Harris has been protecting our border for years. <laughs> like, you can't even say the number of years. When the truth is we know that the Democrats love illegal migrants. And so Steve Cortez, a commentator, he decided to grab a Venezuelan illegal migrant and uh, take him along to the DNC because the Democrats love illegal migrants. This is Edwin from Venezuela. A uh, migrant invited yeah. by the Democrat Party. He'd like to come into the Democrat Convention. You have okay, to get your have credentials. To get some credentials. Yep, you have to go to Jackson. Yep. Wait, you mean he needs credentials and permission to come in? Yes. To get past the wall? Yeah. Oh, it's like a border wall in a way, huh? Yeah. More to get to the convention. We figured that they would love to have a migrant from Venezuela come in. They said we needed credentials, so we're here to get the credentials. Okay. Has anyone filled out an application for him? So you have to, it's, there's a process in the application. I mean, he didn't have that at the border. This is Edwin. He's from Venezuela. He's a migrant. Democratic uh, Party wants an endless stream of migrants into America. So I'd like him to go and meet his political friends, uh, listen to the speeches, and come into the Democratic Convention. Well, you're laughing. He's allowed to come to the United States uh, without identification or permission. Can he come into the DNC? Uh, I don't think the Secret Service is going to go for it. No. Really has 45 seconds been so powerful in making a point. You can get into America real easy, but try getting into the DNC, no chance at all. All of a sudden, the Democrats aren't so keen on illegal migrants. Why can't they come to your big party? They owe it to you that they're here, Democrats. No closed doors all round. But one of my most favourite moments from day three of the DNC was the Commerce Secretary. Her name's Gina Romando. She's being interviewed here and she's asked about what she thinks about the fact that according to the government's own data, a million of the new jobs that the Biden-Harris administration claimed to have created during their tenure actually don't exist. When you hear that, do you potentially think that this new numbers could be a liability for this campaign? No. When I hear that, first of all, I don't believe it because I've never heard Donald Trump say anything truthful. It is, though, from the Bureau of Labor. I don't... I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not just Donald Trump. It is the government's own data. I'm, I'm not familiar with the Bureau of She's Labor. She's the Commerce Secretary. And, uh, <laughs> Commerce Secretary. I'm not familiar with the employment numbers. It it's, might be, um, it's just a lot of joy. <laughs> just a lot of joy. Might be one million and one jobs that have disappeared <laughs> after that performance. That is absolutely terrible. Um, I don't know about you guys, though. Whenever I go to the DNC, mm. I like to make sure I... I get my right target demographic because, of right. course, you know, there's um, black men for Harris, mm -hmm. black women for Harris, white women for Harris, flying purple people eaters for Harris. So where would you, you be? You know, three midgets and, you know, Snow White plus <laughs> a guy on a chain somewhere out the back for Harris. Um, I, of course, go to what my natural demographic is, where I belong, hotties for Harris. I was at the Hotties for Harris party last night, which was a party a bunch of people went to, and um, it was like they had, like, all of these different sort of things. They had, like, mini golf where, like, you put, you, like, go mini golf through, like, a ring of tampons and stuff. And then I went through, um, then there was, like, a gumball machine. And I was like, oh, l let me turn the gumball machine and, you know, maybe it's, like, a ring or something. And um, it was, um, I have this, it was plan B. <laughs> so I said earlier this election is Kamala Harris's to lose... Why are they so desperate to lose it? Like, why are you being so weird? And just crit. Like, who plays mini golf with tampons these on the outside? Free, these guys have free vasectomies and abortions going on in the car park of the DNC. You can't get... Well, I don't even want to say weird because that's just outright degeneracy. That's evil as far as I know. And just in case people missed it, she got an abortion pill, but that was the award that she yes. won, the Plan B. Yes. The irony, of course, is that Kamala is the Democrats' Plan B. Um, Donald Trump has just been on Fox and Friends warning about what America would look like if Kamala Harris is elected. Let's have a listen. 
these two people take it over, this country is finished. Well, she's a Marxist, and that's where she's going to be. Open borders, no drilling, our country will die. Well, I don't think there's much doubt about that, particularly the open borders. The Democrats have shown no appetite at all for closing that, and you wouldn't expect anything to change if uh, the Democrats are re-elected.